Mmm! Wow! What's up guys? Rip Trippers back at you today. Man, I'm not used to my camera being that far away. I'm used to being in your face, but I gotta get used to it because my, my desk pod, it uh, conked out on me. So I gotta, got this big ass tripod over here. You guys can't see it, but uh, gotta take my word for it. It's huge. So um, anyways, today we're gonna be talking about the Tin Man Coil. What is the Tin Man Coil? Well, here's a picture for you right now. I'm gonna explain what a 10 man coil is, and then what I'll do, I'm gonna first, first I'm gonna vape it, I'm gonna talk about it, compare, because I've been using this setup two weeks. I've rebuilt about three or four different 10 man coils. I'm gonna compare them to the micro coil. I'm gonna take a few hits, we'll talk about it. The way I've set this coil up is, you know, for something like a rebuildable dripper, like the Trident. I posted this on Juice Junkies. It's a uh, it's a vaping group. Lingering vapor. It's a vaping group. If you guys are watching this, you want to be a part of a vaping group on Facebook, check out Juice Junkies. It's rapidly grown. We've got like 1,700 members. It's only been up for like not even a month and a half, this group. And I love it. The, the people there are awesome, interactive. You know, they do their coil building, their posts, what they're vaping that day, the juice they're using. So I recommend going there, okay? I'll post a link below to Juice Junkies, okay? But I posted a picture up there yesterday and <laughs> it looks like a Tin Man. That's why, you know, I came up with the name the Tin Man. Um, I'm sure people have done this type of build before and basically what it is, it's flat ribbon wire, okay? I've used flat ribbon wire for the past year. But I've never done a video on it because with the other builds that I've done on a Genesis Atomizer compared to like something like the 28 gauge, I always prefer the 28 gauge over the flat ribbon. I just could not get, I couldn't get the heat and the flavor off of a Genesis build using the flat ribbon that I could with the 28 gauge. I know everything's subjective, but that's just, you know, that's where I stood. The flavor's always been stellar on the flat ribbon, but it just wasn't giving me that denseness that I wanted, that the 28 gauge Canthal was giving me. So I started to experiment with this flat ribbon in RDAs. At first I was doing the same type of builds I was doing in a Genesis Atomizer. I was getting a little bit better results, but not much. Once I started doing micro coiling, I picked up some more flat ribbon wire from kidneypuncher.com. I'll post a link below. The Tan Man coil is not a micro coil. And I'm gonna explain in a minute. I'm gonna show you guys how to build one in this video. But when I built this bad boy, I was like, whoa, it's different, okay? It's different in a good way to me. Now, it's totally different from the 28 gauge. I mean, flavor, I'm gonna take another hit. Well, the vapor, I mean, the vapor is, it's, it's really, really, really thick. It, it produces dense vapor, but the flavor and the warmth of the vapor is really different than the 28 gauge. Now, 28 gauge, when I've got the same setup, now I'm using cotton, organic cotton. For those of you guys who know me, you know that's what I prefer. I've got the same setup in here with the 10 man coil. Now, it's not as dense as the 28 gauge, but it's more crisp. It's a lot a lot like vaping uh, 28 gauge Canthal on stainless steel mesh in your Ginny atomizer flavor wise. And that crispness that the micro coil using a 28 gauge or any other regular Canthal couldn't produce. Okay, that's where this, uh, this 10 man coil really steps up the game, okay, with the flavor. Flavor is like, 
it's it's just like it using a Genesis on, with your stainless steel mesh to me. It's the crispest flavor I've ever gotten from using cotton, okay? It kind of threw me for a loop at first and it took me a while to get used to it. The beauty of this, of having this setup, is I can always go back. I've got other atomizers, you know, with the 28 gauge micro coil or the nano coil, and I can always go back to those if I want something that's more dense and, and, a, and a hotter vape. This is still a warm vape, but it's not as hot as a micro coil, but it's still warm. It's very satisfying. But what gets me is it's just like, to me, it's just like using stainless steel mesh um, with a micro coil in a Jenny atomizer. That's what I'm getting. Flavor's top notch in a micro coil, but this is, it's like more crisp with the density, but it's not as dense as the regular Canthal micro coil. It's weird. Here's the funkiness to it all. When I use the flat ribbon, I still get that crisp flavor, but it's not nearly as crisp unless the coils are overlapping and touching each other. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. But the reason why I call it the Tin Man is because it looks like a Tin Man when it's all said and done. You guys saw it in the photo. Also, I have not, that's a lot of vapor, I have not dripped at all this video so far and I've been talking to you guys for like the last, what, eight minutes, ten minutes? That's another thing that I've noticed. I can get way more pulls out of using the Tin Man coil than I can from the Micro coil. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, oh, this is the next big thing. It all depends on what you want, okay? So, like, if you're looking for really crisp flavor and you, you're looking for that flavor that the stainless steel mesh produces, but you can't get it using something like silica or cotton, you can with this, okay? So, like, I thought that the flavor was really crisp before using a micro coil and cotton. And, um... And you know, and then I went back to uh, to vaping on a Genesis a few days ago when I showed you guys how to how to you know get rid of those hot spots in a Jenny, and I realized that wow, you know, the stainless steel mesh is really crisp. I mean, it's not there. You know, with the micro coil, the cotton is not there, but it's still really crisp, um, and the micro coil takes you there. But with this setup, with the 10 man coil, it's like up there with the stainless steel mesh as far as crisp wise. That's what really threw me for a loop. It surprised me. So, and I'm gonna show you guys how to build one today. Oh yeah, let's get to it. All right, so I've got my 564 drill bit. I've cut an eight inch piece of flat ribbon and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start wrapping. I'm going to do nine wraps. And I want to make sure that each wrap I do is not at an angle. It's straight over top because you'll see why you'll see what I'm talking about. Alright. I would say the first wrap is the hardest. And when you wrap, unlike a micro coil, as you can see, you want these wraps to be pretty much on top of each other. A fourth of the way on top of each other, if that makes any sense. But it's really hard not to go at an angle. Don't give it any slack because this, this ribbon is really uh, springy. But as you can see, unlike a micro coil, these wraps do overlap and that's what you want. And as you can see, it, it's, it's not even like a micro coil. Kind of looks like a Tin Man, doesn't it? And that's why I call it that. So, um, so yeah, once we have that right there, You want to get a hold of each coil, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to torch 
that coil on top of this 564 drill bit, okay? And we're going to get to that. This flat ribbon is pretty forgiving. I mean, it's not, it's, it's really springy, um, but at the same time, it holds pretty well too. So, next step, you're just going to want to take your torch, you're going to want to torch this coil. You want to torch this coil until it glows. And what that does is it makes it even more stiff. And I'm going to repeat this process two or three more times. So here we are again, second time. I pulled the slack out even more. As you can see, it's getting more even, but it still looks like a damn tin man, doesn't it? All right, so we're going to torch it again. Torch until it glows. We should be good after this one. As even as I can get it, boys and girls. This is actually a uh, Trident clone. It cost me like 23 bucks from uh, a company called Discount Vapors. Just clipped it. And then the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to each strand, from here on out, each strand is going to be turned vertical. So. Like that. And I find that turning them facing each other is the best way to go. As you can see, look how they went from flat to vertical. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in the slots. Okay, just like that. And then what I'll do is I'll bend the wires down so they stay in place. I'm going to place the first nut on there like that. But this tri trident is perfect for this tin man coil because it has those slots. I'm going to have to use these tweezers. See, that's what I love about purchasing a device with uh, flathead screws because damn you can use anything you want from tweezers all the way to a butter knife to a dime I mean you can use anything to tighten these bad boys down you don't want to tighten them down too tight because you don't want to pop the coil and the next step I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull these coils up like that And what I'll do is I'll lift it up. I'll just give it a little lift like that. That way I can fit a nice cotton cloud under there. I'll gently pull this drill bit out. You got to be gentle. All right. And there she is. That's nine wraps right there on that Tin Man, and uh, that should read us between 1.3 and 1.6 ohms. All right, let's see. 1.5 ohms. And that's only 14 and a half watts. Got me some old cotton, organic cotton. Going to repeat this again. I've got a post coming on rebuildable supplies and where to get them, where I get them, all that good stuff. But this is organic cotton. I boil it when I get it. I boil it for 15 minutes. Then I rinse it for a good five minutes. Then I reboil it for 15 minutes. And then I let it dry for 24 hours. And when I come back to it, it's nice and fluffy. Nice and fluffy, just like that, all right? And what I'll do is I'll just take a little, uh, I'll take a little, uh, little piece right here. Little piece of cotton. I'll roll it up nice and tight. And what I'll 
I'll do is I'm just going to slide it like that and I'll gently pull see how it comes right through there it's got to be you know loose like that but also pretty snug at the same time this is going to be my cotton cloud right here and all I'm going to do is just tuck tuck her under pull this side off like that Nice, she's nice and saturated right there. As you can see, it's 14 and a half watts. Oh, 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 oh yes! Okay. All right, we're gonna put the cap on. Make sure that the air hole is right over that tin man coil. All right, gonna put my drip tip in, and we're gonna take it to the big screen. Okay, so I've got the tin man coil in this clone with the hole set to wide open. At 20 watts, I can get probably eight good pulls before I have to drip again. The micro coil at 20 watts, I could probably only get half that. With the 28 gauge micro coil, my preferred was anywhere between 16 and a half and 18 and a half. I would only be able to get two or three hits at 20 watts. So with this, I'm vaping at 20 watts, I could get eight really good pulls off of it. Like I showed you guys, I have that hole set up to wide open. The beauty of it is, is that at the wide open draw, I'm getting full flavor. And most other setups I've ever done, it usually dumbs the flavor down a little bit. With this 10 man wrap I've got on here, I'm getting full flavor with the hole wide open. It's pretty remarkable. Like I said earlier at the beginning of this video, this setup may not be for you. I'm starting to get used to this 10 man coil setup. And yeah, I'm hoping you guys give it a shot um, because like I said, I've been using this for a, a week and a half, two weeks, pretty much, you know, nonstop other than the vaping videos that I've been shooting. And I've been loving it. I've been loving every minute of it. Crazy. This is Rip Trippers. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to comment below. And remember, smoking is dead. Vaping is the future. And the future is now.